Did you ever wish your child would never grow up? It was like having a newborn baby. He was so tiny and it looked human-like. Imagine looking after a toddler for the next 40 years. She's my kid for the rest of my life. For some families, this is a reality. Their very own forever baby, a monkey baby. I'm a monkey mom. Oh, that's my identity. It's like a human baby that never grows up. But the dream can turn into a nightmare. I don't feel they make good pets. The safety of the family is my top priority. She would bite me to the point that she would draw blood. I would lose skin. They are wild animals, and they bite. There are around 15,000 primates owned in America, and many are more than just pets. They're mom kids. No, it's not my pet. It's my companion for life. Adopting monkeys as surrogate babies is a growing phenomenon in the USA. The monkey community are devoted to these non-human primates and see them as part of the family. They're my daughter. They're my adopted daughters. It's just the love that you can't explain. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> what is that? Hello. But many believe the monkey trend is out of control and are concerned about cruelty to the monkey and danger to the humans. The surrogate child pet monkey phenomenon is not new. It has just had a resurgence. And it is getting so out of proportion, it's, it's really horrible. This family has discovered just how dangerous monkeys can be. In the town of Norfolk in Virginia, 31-year-old Sean lives with his pregnant wife, Sherry, and daughters, Jalen, age six, and Brianna, age four. The reasons for wanting to get a monkey were started when I was a little kid. As I was growing up, my father always had animals, and he grew up in Africa, so he was always around wild animals. So that's kind of where my fascination began. Sean's family couldn't afford a monkey baby, which can cost $5,000 or more. So they bought an adult male capuchin for $500 a few months ago. But it's only now that they're really starting to pay. Shalad is an eight-year-old capuchin monkey who has had four previous owners. He's a biter and a challenge for Sean. The ad that we responded to um, said, breeder monkey, not for a good pet. Well, I'm a stubborn guy, and I figured, ah, we can change him. Nothing is, is, is mean forever. Dangerous animals have always fascinated me, because there's always that risk. After about a week, I had gone in, in, into the cage and went and physically grabbed him out. And I was covered, my hands were covered in blood because he just kept, you know, chewing on me and scratching me. And oh, it was so painful the first few times. He would just totally rip me apart. Sean's kids were excited when their dad first brought home a monkey. I was so happy when we got him because he was so cute when he was in his playroom. But Shalad wasn't the cuddly plaything they had hoped for. Remember when he used to bite me? He was crazy, and Shalad. Scratch me, <laughs> and how you guys were scared to go near him. And you guys called him crazy, he Shalad. Cage <laughs> yeah. and scream at you. He'd been biting and scratching him, and I was scared. Dad was trying to talk to Mom, and he attacked Dad. Part of civilizing Shalad is keeping him in diapers. Come, let's go get your diaper changed. Baby. Nice Shalad. Hey. Hey, baby. Hi. You're changing your diaper, yes. Monkey parents use diapers for their own convenience, but that can mean owners have to change them for around 40 years. To try and calm Shalad down, he has had what the monkey community called alterations. Shalad has already had his adult canine teeth pulled out by previous owners. We did neuter him um, a few weeks ago, and it, it calmed him down dramatically. 
Altering a monkey by having it neutered and removing its teeth may give the owner an easier life, but it's not natural for the primate. They're trying to change what they are into something else to try to make them into this little human. They aren't little humans. They are wild animals and they bite. What Sean didn't realize was that this new family member would start choosing sides in his human family. With me and Sherry, uh, he gets very aggressive when, when we're both in the same room. Uh, if he's in the cage and she gets close to me, he shakes the cage. Shalad is becoming increasingly protective of pregnant Sherry and increasingly hostile towards Sean. Situations like Sean's, where the monkey is a danger to the family, are increasingly common. 20 states have banned private primate ownership, and the federal government has proposed legislation to control the practice across the US. I'm against the legislation that is making it tougher for people to own them and enjoy what I'm enjoying right now. Even with the bans and threat of restrictions, monkey adoptions continue. But that also means people are dumping them when they hit puberty and start to bite. They lose their tempers very quickly, and their first response is to bite. Do monkeys bite? All monkeys bite. But can you control it? Yes, of course you can. With the right taming and training, you can have a monkey as a companion. Being a monkey mum is a risky business, but the dangers aren't necessarily the top concern. Many monkey mums just fall in love with the monkeys when they're babies. It was, it was like having um, a newborn baby. I mean, he was so tiny. It looked human-like. I think a lot of people get a monkey because they're so cute. And it makes a nice show and tell. It also provides for an empty nest syndrome. I really don't think there's much of a difference between a monkey and a human baby. They still have the baby food and the diapers and the clothing and stuff. I have two infants for 30 years. <laughs> you know, it's constant and never a dull moment. Primatologist Catherine C. McKinnon has been studying capuchins in the wild for the last 17 years. She has observed firsthand in the jungles of Costa Rica just how different their lives are away from concrete and diapers. Capuchins are found in Central and South America, um, and generally they live in pretty complex social groups with lots of individuals, different ages, both sexes. Capuchins are very active primates, and they spend a large part of their day um, actively foraging and looking for food. So a capuchin that's housed in a living room or even you know, a relatively large outdoor enclosure is not natural. Animal dealers began to import monkeys to North America by the early 1900s. Capuchins were originally used by organ grinders to entertain the public. Importing monkeys for use as pets was banned in North America in 1975. Today, most pet capuchins are bred in captivity in North America. Backyard breeding of exotic animals as pets is a multi-million dollar business nowadays. And for monkeys, it's a highly unnatural process. When you have females that are used as breeding monkeys, that is, they're sped up in terms of their reproductive timelines, um, it's very unnatural and can have some serious consequences, not only for the infant that's taken, but for that mother as well. The breeders take the babies within a few days. They steal them from as early as three days old. Capuchin monkeys will live on their mother's back and nurse for up to two years. One of the hallmarks of being a primate, uh, indeed being a mammal, is a strong mother-infant bond. So, for example, if a monkey is pulled from its mother at, say, three days of age, you get the classic uh, rocking, tail-sucking, hair-pulling, biting, these repetitive uh, behaviors that infants do not do in wild groups. Breeders say that the earlier they pull babies from their biological mums, the better they bond with their human mums.